Hey there. Thank you for watching this clip on rationalized denominators. Rationalized denominators, it's not a difficult concept. Let's get started over here. All we need to do is enforce the denominator as a nice number. What I mean by nice number, it's a real number. It's actually a, a, even better. It's a natural number. Okay. So what we're going to do is multiply the radical two, top and the bottom. Then bottom becomes 2 and the top becomes radical 2. A lot of students over the years ask me, well, why do we bother to do that? I think that has to do with development of mathematics. You see, before calculator comes on, radical 2 itself is equal to 1.414, so on and so forth. It's a decimal point. Before calculator comes around, we actually use this ancient, ancient tool called slide rules. Yeah, I don't know if you ever seen one of those. Uh, those day and age kids don't use them. A lot of their parents, uh, if you have older parents, they may actually use them once. So I went online and I printed a picture out of this one. So it's a tab and it slides in and out. And using those lines, you actually line them up to do divisions. As you can ima imagine, uh, 1.414 over 1, it's a difficult thing to do. However, if you rationalize into radical 2 over 2, okay, this becomes 1.414 divided by a nice number on the bottom, which is 2. It's a lot easier to calculate. I think the development of mathematics with the calculator coming around, but the habit, quote unquote, stuck. All right, let's move around. Move on. Next one I have an interesting request from a student asking if we can show how to rationalize stuff like this one. Okay, The basic concepts are still exactly the same. Well, our goal is get rid of the radical on the bottom, so I'm going to duplicate itself. So when you have a square root, you want to duplicate. So when you square, you get rid of the square roots on the bottom. So it becomes 5x squared and y. And then on top, you do have to multiply it out. Two, and then the radical, let's put everything under radical. So I have a x squared times x squared. That's this term and this term. Y times y becomes y squared. Okay, one more step. Uh, radical a, there's nothing we can do. We're going to leave it in there. x squared, x squared, that's a square and it comes out. y squared comes y. Okay, and added a benefit, we can actually clean it up a little bit. So we have 2 times radical a divided by 5. Okay, so that's the answer. Now another student asks, well, what happens if it's not a square root? Well, let's take a look. Once again, our goal, it's still the same. Okay, so this is radical 5. So I need a 5 of them to make a rational number, to make it a nice number. So I'm going to multiply 5 radical 2. That's 2 of them. Radical 2. 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so a compact form on the top, which is equal to the bottom, is I multiply it four times. Okay, so this one is equal to radical 2, or not radical 2, 5 roots of 2, 5 times, that becomes a 2. Okay, now on the numerator, this one is equal to as if I can put a 4 inside. So that's become fifth root of 16 because 2 to the fourth is 16. Okay, so our requirement is bottom number is a nice number. Let's move on. What if we have something a little more nasty in that I have two of them on the bottom? Okay, here we're going to use the different square. Because our goal is get rid of all the both of the radical signs. And the a squared minus b squared comes handy. Because I, if I just square simply, I'll have a cross term. Okay, I'll show you in, in a minute why it wouldn't work if we just square the bottom. Okay. If we were just to square the bottom, I have radical 5. That's squared. A lot of students forget this. But here's the important. It's 2 times radical 5, radical 3. Okay. The reason we have such nasty cross term is this. If you times this by itself, doing the FOIL, you'll see you have radical 5 squared 
which is very good. We got rid of the radical there. However, next one is radical 5 times radical 3. And doing this again, you have another one plus radical 3 squared. Okay, so simply square the denominator does not do the trick. Okay, as you can see, that we, we do have a cross term here, and it gets in trouble. So what we actually do instead is where we multiply what we call its conjugate in that if you started with minus, I'm going to change it into a plus, okay, and then I'll do the same on the top. The reason is that we do want to square the front one and the back one, but the only way to allow us to get away with that without the cross term, as we saw over here, is using the formula difference squared. So it's a minus b times a plus b. And that allows us to have a nice expression without the cross term. Radical 5 squared minus radical 2, the 3 squared. And then let's do the FOIA on top. So have minus 3 times 5 plus minus 3 radical 15 because radical 5 times radical 3 is radical 15. And the bottom line simply have a, a 2. Okay. Now, one more step to go that another student asked, well, what, what do we do with the complex numbers? Now, if you haven't covered this one, don't worry about it. The idea is exactly the same as what we had before, 3, 4 plus 7i, where i, by definition, is radical of 1. So i squared is equal to minus 1. That's all you have to know. Okay, we're going to do the exactly the same thing, multiply by its conjugate. So I have 16, which is 4 squared, minus 7i squared. On top, I'm going to FOIA, which is minus 12, 12 minus 21i. 12 minus 21i, 16 minus, this is 49, but with a minus sign. So on the bottom line, I would have 16 plus 49. On top, I have 12 minus 21i. That's added together, 16, that's 65. One more step, 65, 12 minus 21i. That's my answer. So once again, so since 7i squared is equal to 49 times minus 1, so I have minus 49 here. All right, so that's how we handle rationalized denominator. Hopefully it's clear for you. Please comment on YouTube and let me know if it helped you. Hi, this is Dr. Pan, host of Tucson Math Doc channel. I'm here to make math easy and fun for you. Till next time, have a confident day.